This is the city of Los Angeles, one of the fastest growing communities in the United States today. A city that still reflects the charm and customs of its native past. A city of culture, of advanced liberal education that keeps abreast of each new generation. A city of progress and tremendous engineering accomplishments. Los Angeles, city of the angels. But like any other city, it has its back alleys, its world of saints and sinners, and the half world of dark shadows some of them dwell in. The darkest of these shadows is marijuana. In every large city, there are men like Captain Hayes, chief of the narcotic division. His job is to combat and control this evil menace. His fight, a 24-hour one. His weapons, simple but effective, patience and intelligence. Every case history tells the same story, a story that's a tragic pattern of men and women's lives. Cause without the answers. But he has the answer. Escape. Sell the dreams people want to dream. Keep them from waking up. Because once they do, you're out of business. Of course, the rich can afford to pay more for their dreams. It's a profitable game. And when boredom sets in, heroin, cocaine, opium is always the next step at higher prices. If you'll live that long, this man has no pride. To lay his hands on an extra dollar, he'll set this killer loose on anyone. Even your kids who go to high school. You may even know him. His name is Marky. Oh, Ricky, I like you. <laughs> Change five pennies for a nickel pop. Right back, baby. Hiya, Marky. Shut up, you crazy kid. How many times have I told you not to mention my name? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, you're getting good taste. Wish I was young again. It's gonna cost you five bucks tonight. Five bucks? That's right. Weekend special, three for five, just for you. Yeah, but five dollars, that's all I got. So tell your old man to double your allowance next week. No. Come on, dig. You want it or not? Haven't got all night. Okay, okay. Have fun. did a big business, three lives. One girl never to walk again, if she lives. Too bad it wasn't the guy who sold them those sticks. We'll get him, Mason. May take time. When we do, we'll throw the book at him. 
From all reports, this peddler isn't the ordinary run of the mill. He moves in all circles, from Beverly Hills and Bel Air to the nightclubs along the Strip, from Hollywood and the Wilshire District all the way down to Skid Row. I'm assigning you and Ty in this case. You're going to work as a team. Now, I want this deal handled strictly on the hush side. No pickups, no arrests. We can pull in the users any time. We do it now, they may clam up. They talk, their supply is cut off. Our job is to find the main source of supply. Who sells it to the peddlers? How he rolls the stuff in and where he stores it. Looks like our vacation is over. It was so nice and quiet in the community, too. Somebody had to go get greedy and start a big push on the stuff again. But if we blow this deal, boys, all our vacations will be permanent. Well, better get some sleep. This may be our last chance. The boss was right. Sleep? That was for babies. I went home, dug out my old school books, loaded up my pockets with nickels for the jukebox, and brushed up on my jive talk. Then I played a solo in that malt shop. Another drink, madam? Me? Oh, I joined the union to wear the uniform. If the customers hadn't been loyal patrons, I, I think I would have put the owner out of business. I was all hands, about six. The only trouble was, five of them didn't function. Say, Marky, can you let me have... Uh-uh, sweetheart. I crossed your name off my books. I'm not in business for love. Well, I can pay you next week. See me then. But, Marky, I... No, there's no more action. We have only four more years before opening. Wait, wait, my friend. We do not have all day. Undress quickly, please. Hello, Hugo. Find any new talent lately? Big? You stay away from my girls. Hugo, you hurt my professional pride. You want them to have rhythm, don't you? Yeah, but don't go sure. Back in a minute, honey. Hello, Marky. I'm awful jumpy today. Are you holding? I've been telling you, Marky, she's a nice kid. She's only working here because she needs a dough. Marky, did you hear what I asked? I've had my eye on that for a long time. Lay off, Marky. She's the kind that works to help support her brother, wants him to have a decent education. I... Rita, you sound as if I had the wrong ideas. I think education's a wonderful thing. I want to talk to her about it. I told you, she's a nice kid. So am I. I like nice kids. That's why I want to meet her. Arrange a party. Marky, I... Make it tonight. All right. You're a real sensible girl, Rita. The kind that knows how to keep a good friend. How about coming over? Well, Bob's coming home from college. Summer vacation. He may be in tonight. We'll bring the party to you. Really welcome the kid home. <laughs> now you kiss me. <laughs> now you. <laughs> Mm, I like yours better. Your mustache is tickle. <laughs> well, the lady really is alive. Had me worried for a while. Rita always gets fun out of things. Don't you? I guess maybe I'm too busy trying to make a living. I help send my brother to college. Yeah, so I heard. What you need maybe is a little education yourself. Learn to relax. Let your hair down. You got a lot of class. Charm. 
With a guy like me, you might even go places. I know a lot of people, the right kind. You might even call me a sort of Santa Claus. I could turn your life into a nice, big, beautiful sleigh ride. Enough dough to put your brother through college twice. You make living sound attractive. Oh, here. Try one of mine. Go ahead. It won't hurt you. Sure, you know I wouldn't steer you wrong. Oh, no, baby, not like that. Here, try it. Show somebody else, stupid, not her. <laughs> like this, honey. See? Now you try it. That's the way. One is like nothing beautiful. Try another. Troubles are all gone. Try another pup. See how pretty the world looks then. You're so smart, Mark. So smart. Music. Somebody play some music. I want to dance. Yeah, I'll buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not waste it dancing. Says. Oh, says. I said, get out. I'm Ann's brother. Anything else you want to know? I'm sorry. What a night. Says, Ann. No, Marky. No more. Makes my head spin. I'll let Rita have it. Says, 
Wake up, sis. It's Bob. Bob! When did you get here? Oh, a little while ago. Well, why didn't you wake me up, silly? Well, I started to, but you were so sound asleep that I just didn't have the heart to. Oh, well, how about fixing me up some coffee, huh? Okay. Coffee coming up. Well, now that I'm awake, how about a kiss hello? Hi, sis. Sorry I couldn't get here in time for the party. Oh, it was nothing. Tell me all about school, Bob. You want one of your cigarettes? Help yourself. What's the matter? Something wrong? Bob, you didn't quit school, did you? No. But it's something I've been wanting to talk about. But why, Bob? Aren't you happy there? Are you in trouble? No. No, it's nothing like that. Sure, I want to go on with college. I even had a couple of my paintings on exhibition this semester. But look, I know how hard you work, and I know what it costs to keep me going. What, with the payments on the house and everything? Look, you've done so much for me already, it, it just isn't fair to keep taking away from yourself and giving me. Sis, I'm gonna get a job. Know the right people. With enough dough to put your brother through college twice. Put your brother through college twice. Know the right people. Listen to me, Bob. You're not giving up school. Not with your future. I never had a chance for one, but I'm seeing that you do. But the money. I, I can't let you do it. I've made up my mind. Everything will be taken care of. Ann, who is this Mr... Who? I'll go unpack. But who's Marky, and who was it I found on the couch in the living room when Wait I Wait a minute, kid. Slow down. You're throwing questions at me like I was on a quiz show. I'm sorry. It's just that I was upset coming in like that. Why don't you relax, Bob? So Ann had a little party. I was there with a few friends. We even hung around waiting for you to come home. Maybe it's just as well I didn't. You picked yourself up a cute little imagination since you were home last. Anne works hard trying to put you through college. Figures you deserve it. Maybe someday you'll make it up to her. I'm thinking about quitting college. She can't be making more than 60 or 75 dollars a week at the most. How can she do everything on that? And live. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this because it's, well, sort of a surprise. But Anne did say something about a new act, a little specialty routine that's going into a club. It'll mean another 25 a week. Rita, who's Marky? A friend, kid. Just a friend. Stripes become you, Raymond. Must keep you from getting too lonesome for home. Your jokes are gonna have you laughing yourself to death someday, friend. <laughs> what got you up so early in the morning, insomnia? Let's call it ambition. You shove weeds to those high school kids? Man's gotta make a living these days, Jonathan. With me, a buck's a buck. Take you, for instance. A view overlooking the city, custom-made furniture, different soup three times a day. You're a big man, Jonathan, a big man. I was thinking maybe I might be your neighbor one of these days. You just have to learn to crawl before you can walk, Marky. Like you did? Listen, Marky. You pull another deal like this last one, and the narcotic boys will be bucking on your tail like a pack of bloodhounds. 
That's my worry, not yours. When it comes to being in front of the gun, I am always there, not you. So I appreciate your loyalty. That's why I trust you, but it's things like this that make it very difficult for the margin man, like myself. It's tougher to roll the stuff in, prices go up. You're telling me that because of this caper in the news, it's going to cost me more dough? Mm, let's say uh, $25 a can for each case of fresh, ripely picked tomatoes. Talk like it was a chain store. I take the major risks. And it's only honest that I share in the profits. Well, what can I do? You got me over a case of tomatoes. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, Miller. When? I had nearly ten grand riding that shipment. Couldn't you do anything? All right, all right. Just keep out of sight. I'll contact you later. Trouble, maybe? Yeah. Miller was hijacked last night, coming in from Arizona. Some other outfit must have gotten wind of it. Are you sure Miller wasn't the wind? I hear tell he'll hold hands with anybody that'll drop over 50 cents in his palm. Even the cops. I find out, I'll call you. Return the favor. Take it out and trade at the old prices. Raymond, I want you to pay Miller a little visit. Be real sociable. Take him out for an airing.
No, Aaron. There. There. Open. 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 I hope Hugo wasn't watching too closely. I was all feet. It's the longest rehearsal I've ever had. Another minute and I'd have dropped. And how about a lift? Have you got it with you? I wish I had. But Marky will have something. He'll be outside. Maybe I should tell you, Marky isn't the easiest man in the world to resist. I know what I'm doing. Before you two go, see me in my office. You uh, wanted to see us? We. Oui. For weeks now, you've both lumbered about like two elephants. The feet, they never left the floor. The bodies, statues, stones. The face, green masks. Grand Guignol, lifeless. So I shall be brief. You fired. Go pick up your checks at the cashier. Why, you... Please do not excite me. Let's not waste time telling him what he can do with his job. Come on. You go, Rita. I'll see you later. Hugo, I'd like to keep my job. No, absolutely more, no. But I help support my brother. I send him to college. Brother, mother, mortgage, farm, mink coat. Always something is being supported. Always somebody is sending somebody someplace. But the answer is still no. I know this man, Marky. I see what he does to people. I feel very sorry for you. Save your sympathy for somebody who needs it. Hi. It's so early today. I'm through, period. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, just that I lost one of a girl's best friends. Her job. So now you got a new one. Friend or job? Both. Starting now. You're the boss, friend. <laughs> Like your new job, beautiful? You'd make a girl like anything, including you. Why don't you take care of the guests? All right. Quiet, everybody, quiet. Music, professor. All right, you generous people. You are here to enjoy yourselves, and I am here to see that you do. For your pleasure tonight, we have a special offering. Some people call it madness. Others, the devil. But if it is the devil, he's helped to send my baby brother to college. Hasn't he, Marky? Collect the dough, sweetheart. Never mind the speeches. Two dollars a stick, ladies and gentlemen. Two dollars. One for Marky. One for Annie's brother. Dig into your pocket for that big, beautiful, green stuff called money. Take it easy, Ann. The kid might walk in. Who's working the fingers to the bone? Annie, that's who. Who'll be the first to cut up a touch with me? I will. Bobby, where have you been? Little boy shouldn't stay out so late. You're rude. Now I know who Marky is. And what he is. And you too. Blow, kid. Go buy yourself a double malt and come back tomorrow.
clue. A lead to help crack a case can be a funny thing. Sometimes it doesn't even take much to find. Just someone with enough courage to bring it out in the open. Homicide listened to Hugo's story, then transferred it over to Captain Hayes and the Narcotics Division. It was a simple story, but with tragic implications. A story like so many others from so many people, full of ifs. If only he hadn't been afraid. If only he'd turned Marky in. If only he'd listened to Anne and not fired her. If, if only Hugo could make a positive identification. You never know. When you least expect things to happen, they happen. From that minute on, Marky started living in a fishbowl. Lieutenants Mason and Tyne had a string on him 24 hours a day. They got up with him in the morning, followed him around like bloodhounds, and put him to bed at night. And sometimes they even went visiting. The boys wound up doing plenty of homework on Marky, and it wasn't long before they started adding to their program. Subject, Ann Lester. And we've been living with a guy for a week now, Captain. He's a smart boy. Never oversteps himself, never anything out in the open. He's been sticking to the old timers ever since that high school episode. We can pick them up anytime. What about his source of income? No score for us yet, Captain. We, um accidentally got into his apartment. Uh, strictly a mistake. The stuff he gets comes in cans, but unfortunately for us, he'd torn off the label. So all we can do is just sit back and wait till he needs some new stock. Well, keep breathing on him. We've got two things in our favor, time and patience. This Ann Lester girl, Captain, the one whose brother was a suicide. Well, what about her? I've been checking with Alexander down at Homicide. There's a gimmick behind that deal somewhere. All through the coroner's inquest, she kept repeating, it's my fault, it's my fault. That's all I could get out of her. She's been on the habit heavy ever since, with Marky's help. You pick him up, if he passes, it may blow the works. You don't, Marky will have that girl turning cartwheels. She's young and attractive, Captain. You can't tell how much Marky's poured out his little old heart to her. All right, boys, put the bite on him. You got him, boss. Rita, come on. Relax, boys. I'll be with you in a minute. Relax, she says. I'm three years older since she went in to put on a hat. Friend, never rush a woman in anything. Took you all this time to put that on? I had to curl my feathers. Like it? It's a present from you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now the fashion show is over, where are we going? I thought we'd see Anne. She's having a rough time. Blames herself for what happened. She's pretty bitter. Can we console her and, uh... Cut up a touch, too? Maybe. Hello. It's Anne, Marky. Oh, I've got the shakes bad. Rita's coming over. But it's you I want to see. Thanks, Marky. What'd you do, get lost? Just keep your pants pressed under that wheel, bright boy. Look, friend, I'm a big boy now. I like to go riding with girls. I've got an appointment to keep. That's right, with Mr. Trainer. Well, in that case, how can I argue? Then my tire went flat and I lost them. If Tang can pick me up, we'll move in on the girl's house. They may have been headed that way. Okay, boss, we'll keep in touch with you. He 
come along just like a trained seal, Mr. Trainer. What happens, Jonathan? Do I wind up in Santa Monica Bay like Miller? You worried, Marky? Yeah. I never learned to swim. You won't have to. There's no water where you're going. Arizona. Ah, nice dry air, the desert. Good for the health. I want you to roll some stuff in. Only this time, I want to be the only one who knows where you're going. I guess nobody ever told you, Jonathan. I'm an orphan. Just curious about somebody's big sister, that's all. I wouldn't stay awake at nights thinking about it. I got other plans for the big sister. What do I do? Well, there's a little garage just beyond Ela Bend. When you get there, stop and have your tank filled with gas. You'll also have a slow leak in your spare tire. Have it changed. The service man will know what to do. That's pretty clever, Jonathan. And when you get back, call me. I'll, I'll have Raymond meet you. About that gas, do I fill up with ethyl or regular? Than you do. Say, I wonder where Marky is. That's him. Who are you? Narcotic Squad. I'll take that one, chum. Get back with the others. You're making a mistake. We just dropped in. You'll have a chance to explain it downtown. Where's Marky? I asked you where Marky is. I don't know anybody named Marky. You'll make it tough on yourself. Never heard of him. Why the cover-up? Like every room had a for rent sign. I guess Marky had more important places to go. What about the girl? Still cutting her baby teeth. Hasn't learned to talk yet. Okay, it's a nice sunny day. Let's all go get a little fresh air. Won't you sit down? Any law against standing? That's your privilege. This may take some time. I'm sure you'll find that more comfortable, Miss Lester. What am I, under a microscope or something? You know you will be turned over to the police and charged with violation of the narcotics law. So my name will be in the papers, the courtroom will be crowded, and when I get out of jail, no one will care. Miss Lester, why did your brother kill himself? That part of my life is my business. Keep out of it. But your future life isn't, Miss Lester. That's ours. Whether we stay in it or not depends on you. Believe me, we're only trying to help. I don't need anybody's help. I can take care of myself. None of us is infallible. We all make mistakes. The secret is caring enough not to want to make another one. That means Marky. I told you before, I don't know anybody named Marky. We do, Miss Lester. Do you have any idea what sticking to a man like that will mean to you? The Markies in this world aren't very human, Miss Lester. They use people to get what they want out of life. And when the people are no longer useful to them, they walk away from them. By then it's too late. You're destroyed. Nothing like that will ever happen to me. That's an old story to us, Miss Lester. It happens without your even knowing it. They all start out the way you have. It seems fun. You get your kicks out of life. You forget your troubles. But the troubles are still there, so you try something else. Morphine. Opium, maybe. And there's always a Marky around with a smile and a helping hand. Then he takes the stuff away from you because it costs money to get. But by that time, you can't stop. So you have to pay for it in many ways. I don't believe you. This girl was 23 when this picture was taken a year and a half ago. Would you like to meet her?
Matron. Take another look. You wouldn't believe it was the same girl, would you? There's no hope for her anymore. You're just trying to frighten me. Have the car brought around. Maybe I can change your mind. Hello, Gladys. What do you want, copper? Just want you to meet someone. We've known Gladys a long time. Haven't we, Gladys? The feeling ain't mutual. Do me a favor, will you, Gladys? Show her your arm. What is this? A beauty contest? Come on, sweetheart. You should be used to it. Okay, boys. Take a good look. Enjoy yourselves. That's what happens when you take the needle. All right, let's go. This is where Gladys lived. It's what happens when you get down to boots and shoes, when every penny goes to fill a needle or syringe. Here's where Gladys will eventually wind up. Take a look. You're safe. They're always safe on the outside of a psychopathic ward. Go on, take a look. This is the end of the road, Miss Lester. When you get to this stage, there is no other world. This girl was lucky. She committed suicide. She too knew Amarki. Her name could have been Ann Lester. Could have, but it wasn't. Not much fun, was it, Miss Lester? You seem to think it was. What you saw was your future. We want to save you and all the others from one like it. Help us and you help them. Very touching. We're after the man who supplies Marky. That's our only chance. If I ever get around to meeting him, I'll call you and introduce you. Too bad you didn't think of that two weeks ago. Your brother might be alive today. All right, the floor show's over. What are we waiting for? Send the matron in. Yes, sir. Take her away. Crack. Ann Lester, along with the others, pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 60 days in the Los Angeles County Jail. This was a new world, strange, bewildering, a little frightening. The new look, exchanged for a drab one. A number instead of a name, a picture to mark her for future identification. For the next 60 days, this was to be her home, her life, her future, or the end of it, with nothing to keep her company but four bare walls, a window, and cold steel bars. Sixty days and every day the same. Up when darkness dies, to bed while it's still day. The same monotonous routine.
the same thoughts, bitterness, remorse, the feeling she killed her brother, but too ashamed to admit it even to her own self. So Bob is dead and you killed him. The only thing you ever really loved. You took and destroyed it. He was so young and you never gave him a chance to live. He's dead and you killed him. You killed him. Kid killer. You're a kid killer. No, no. Kid killer. Kid Sixty days and sixty nights of the same thing eating its way into her heart and mind. Every face seeming to look at her the same way. Every voice accusing her of the same thing. Kid killer. 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 was the same. And the nights, the nights became living nightmares. Kid killer. 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 mind can only stand so much conflict and turmoil within itself. Ann Lester was no different than anyone else. Transferred to the county jail hospital, she was given a chance to rest and receive proper treatment. Then other things began to disturb her. sure nobody's been here to see me? Nobody. And I've seen lots of girls like yourself come and go. First, it's 60 days. Then it's six months in and six months out. If you add it up, it becomes half a lifetime. The Marquis in this world aren't very human, Miss Lester. They use people to get what they want out of life. A guy like me, you might even go places. I know a lot of people. The right kind. And when the people are no longer able to serve their purpose, the Marquis walk out on them. You might even call me a sort of Santa Claus. 
I could turn your life to a nice, big, beautiful sleigh ride. By that time, it's too late. You're destroyed. This should be a big day for you, Anne. What's so big about it? That after 50 days in the snake pit, you finally open the doors? Well, now that you're out, what are you going to do? Me? I'm going to the beauty shop and try to look my age again. Then I'm going to take a bath. Think the smell of this place will ever come off of me? Welcome home, beautiful. Hello, Marky. You must have been a good girl getting those 10 days out. How else can a girl act in a snake pit like that? We have a lot to talk over. 50 whole days. And nights. That is a real noble thing you did, not talking. I appreciate it. And a friend I do business with appreciates it, too. I didn't do it for him, for you, for nobody else but little me. I've got lots of life to make up for. The only thing I'm interested in from now on is money. You learned a lot in 50 days. That isn't all I learned. I may even be able to get my hands on some of that money. Big money, Marky. No, they do. Let you out at night to roam the streets? No. I decided to become real domestic. Stayed home every night. Meet lots of people. The profitable kind. Well, it's very interesting. What's the pitch on this? Skip it. I'll work the angle myself. Compared to this deal, you're fooling with nickels and dimes. There's a certain party here from the East, fronting for a big syndicate. At the moment, they're looking to tie into some of that stuff. But I don't think that's the real purpose. I think they're planning to open a branch office. That's a big mouthful. I got it from the mouth the words were put into. The gentleman's girlfriend. She became my roommate. I don't think my man in the front office is going to like that. He may not have anything to say about it. Maybe we should arrange an introduction. I said forget it. Simmer down, little girl. We're partners, remember? You could arrange for me to meet this party. Then I might convince him to do business with Trainer. From the way my roommate spoke, her friend was trained to take, not ask. Well, you introduce me. We might all get in on the taking. I'll call her. She's got the influence. I don't usually talk business at this late hour, but who am I to turn a deaf ear to an honest deal? Uh, since you are my guest, Mr. Gabriel, wouldn't you be more comfortable without your hat? I like it with my hat on. Keeps the draft out of my head. What's the proposition, Mr. Gabriel? Please, Marky. How do I know I can trust you to? Her, I know. She took a rap with a couple of acquaintances of mine. The dolls I know don't give the nod unless it's on the level. I wouldn't have suggested coming here unless I knew the trick could be turned, Mr. Gabriel. Okay, sister, you say so. But you blow the deal and Mr. Romero won't like it. Romero? You heard the name right. We got no secrets. Everything open and above board, right on top of the table. Backed by cash on the line. The delivery of merchandise. Seventy-five grand. The cash isn't hot, Mr. Trainer. We keep it in a deep freeze. You can take it to any bank. I apologize for my thoughts, Mr. Gabriel. That's all right, I understand. When you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Now, what about the stuff? I, uh... Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Uh-huh. Well, this rather upsets me. Are you absolutely sure? All right. Forgive me. My butler and right-hand man, Raymond, he's been down taking a little inventory at the warehouse. 
I was hoping to supply you without any delay, but now it seems I don't have that much stuff on hand at the moment. Give me 12 to 18 hours and I'll deliver. What do you say, Marty? Maybe sooner. Where do I pick up? Oh, I'll call you. We'll go together. I'll be waiting. See you around, baby. This deal works out, the boss may give you a nice present. Make it a mink coat. You roll the stuff in, this will be in your pocket tomorrow. I want to see you, alone. Wait out in the hall, beautiful. Some things are private. You don't mind. Just as long as they pay off. Tomorrow night, this time, we'll be celebrating. What's my cut? We split five grand. It's going to be lonesome driving all the way wherever you're going alone. <laughs> you make it tough for a man to stay honest. Who's more important, trainer or me? Who brought him the deal? And who's your partner? Marky, you should do a little more thinking about yourself. What's happened to your ambition? The things the trainer has and you want. What are you driving at? Your ambition. And my lack of conscience, we may get a few connections. Where are we going? Arizona. I think I've been underestimating your talents. Hello, Raymond. Getting a bit chilly waiting around for you. You should have dropped dead from pneumonia. Yeah, now I remember. It was in Chicago about five years ago. I was on homicide. I picked you up just when you were about to give Big Sam a bath in the tub of concrete. I don't forget you, Mason. Please, Raymond. The name is Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel. You know, your boss and I have just made a deal. I'm about to take over his warehouse. Since I'm a stranger in town, maybe you'd better show the way. And just when I was leaving, these jerks drove in with two truckloads of canned tomatoes. But the real ones. Yeah, I'll be here all night unpacking and counting this stuff. Okay, trainer. Nicely done, Raymond. You missed your vocation. You should have been an actor. But then they do put on plays where you're going, don't they? Shall we start? Cozy little place you got here. I'd say it has its good points. Raymond. Raymond. My boss will never forgive me anything goes wrong with this setup. We all have to take our chances, Mr. Gabriel. What fun would there be in winning if we didn't? I thought I told you to leave her out of this. You're thinking for too many people, Jonathan. Whatever she's in, I'm in. We're partners on this deal. Settle your problems on your own time. I'm here for business. 
Hello? Yes? Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, this is trainer. Thank you very much. I appreciate your calling. That was Mr. Romero, Mr. Gabriel. Only he doesn't know any Mr. Gabriel. What is this? Why don't you ask her? It was she that dreamed up Gabriel. That wasn't a very nice thing to do. Keep him covered. Thanks, Anne, for all your help. I don't think we'll have to worry about filling in this blank space with another picture of you. No, Captain. But it's you I have to thank. And Lieutenants Mason and Tyne. It hasn't only been my fight alone, but everybody's. 